Hello, my friends. It's time again. This episode of the podcast, um, this is July 4th weekend. So uh, I know you're going to be out there at the lake or the beach taking your clothes off, trying to look sexy in your swimsuit, and it's probably a disaster. <laughs> we can help you, ladies and gentlemen. This episode is brought to you by Onnit.com. That's O-N-N-I-T. I've always been a big proponent of kettlebells because uh, it's one of the first weightlifting things that I've ever done that allows me to kind of get like the whole workout in. Like a lot of times when I used to lift weights regularly, I'd lift weights, and then another day I'd do cardio. I'd do one day weights, one day of cardio. But with a really good kettlebell workout, I get a brutal cardio workout, and it allows me to get it all done in one shot. I'm a huge fan of them. They just, it's fun to do and it's, uh, it makes you feel like some Russian savage living in Siberia back in the 1930s or whatever the fuck they invented these things. What they are is it's like a cannonball with a big metal handle on it and you swing them around and, uh, in, in doing so in all these various exercises, you develop what they call functional strength, meaning strength for your entire body, not isolated individual movements, but your entire body. And, uh, do they have no chimp? Where's the chimp, Yeah, I was going to say, something's <clears> missing. <throat> the motherfuckers ran out of chimps. They ran away. No, we must have run out. <clears throat> Those fucking things sell like crazy. That's the primal bells. The primal bells are these new kettlebells that we had. This is the most important thing. They look cool as shit. They're, 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 we have chimpanzees, and then we also have zombies. We have uh, apes, rather. We also have zombies. But the, um, the most important thing is that they don't just look good, but that they're 3D mapped. What we have them is we made sure that all of the uh, kettlebells that you're getting, they're, they're not imbalanced. Like You can make a cool face, but if the cool face wasn't balanced, it would kind of defeat the purpose of a kettlebell. The whole idea about a kettlebell is it's got to be balanced when you move it. So it looks badass, but you get a, like, I use the uh, the Gorilla, and I, you get a really good workout with it. It doesn't feel at all like a, a gimmick. Even when it slams into your arm with the Gorilla face first, if you're an idiot, if you're not paying attention to how you're swinging the, the kettlebells. One thing that I can um, really not stress enough when it comes to this stuff, if you're thinking about doing any kind of physical activity, if you've never worked out before, You've got to do two things if you can. The one thing, the if you can part, is hire a personal trainer to show you how to do the movements correctly. Just you know, find out. There's someone who'll do it for you. It'll probably let you iPhone video it, and let let someone you know show you how to do like a clean and press, how to do a windmill, how to do these things correctly, and then videotape it, and then you can do it on your own. And you could literally never have to go to a gym again. With a chin-up bar and a couple of kettlebells, like you can get ferocious workouts in on a daily basis. But start slow. It's if you're a meathead like me, and, and you're a dummy, and you if the you know someone says uh, take three vitamins, you're like I'll take fucking five and see what's up. <laughs> um, you could hurt yourself with these things. Start slow. We have 35 pounders. We have 18 pounders. The howler monkey is 18 pounds, and uh, we go all the way up to 70 pounds with the primal bells. But if you're a real savage, one of those bona fide fitness freaks, like perhaps one of those cal- those crossfit dudes who uh enter into those championships that bitch ass 70 pounds is probably not going to be enough for you if that's the case we sell them even heavier the heaviest ones we sell uh, i don't know why they do them in kilograms i guess that's out of respect to mother russia or some shit <laughs> they all say kilogram at least they don't say poods anymore or whatever that was. yeah we got rid of pood <laughs> but it's now it's still in kilogram okay what the fuck is 40 kilograms let's find out let's tell yeah, people why would they even do i think that? it's 88 pounds Let's see. Weird that they would do that. Yeah, it seems odd. <laughs> We're Americans. Man. What is 40 kilograms in pounds? Yes, it's 88 pounds. So that's the heaviest one we have. If you can throw around an 88-pound kettlebell, you are some kind of man. Huh? For everybody else, start slow, be healthy. And like I said, it's my favorite all-time method of uh, just physical exercise, just you know, without martial arts being the obvious number one. But just for regular exercise kettlebells are the shit and it, it feels good it feels good when you do them it's just it's like a it's 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 you're stretching out a lot in a lot of the movements so it's got almost like a yoga sort of a vibe to it like windmills windmills are some of my favorite things to do super good for your core and your back and but again do them slow and uh if you're interested in any of the on it supplements use the code word rogan and you will save 10 percent off any and all supplements. All right, Crash from the Float Lab is here, ladies and gentlemen. So without any further ado, and no more fuckery afoot, let's get rolling. Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. Hey. 
Ladies and gentlemen, for um, many of you who've heard this podcast before, you're aware of uh, a thing that I'm really into called the sensory deprivation tank. And the sensory deprivation tank was invented by a guy named John Lilly, who is a scientist and a real freak, like a, a guy who is just really out there, really fascinating guy. And he wrote a book that uh, I picked it up on, uh, I think, like um, Amazon.com, like the used books that they'll sell you, like people, sellers, individual sellers are selling. And it's uh, The Deep Self. And in it, he talks about the benefits of the tank, it, it detailed construction on how to make your own tank. He's got like diagrams in it and just really, really fascinating guy. And he was into all sorts of weird altered states of consciousness. And one of the things that he wanted to figure out was how to separate the body from the senses. And he came up with a bunch of different designs. There's a movie, Altered States, that's kind of very loosely based on, you know, the idea of a guy like him going completely haywire and becoming a, like a monkey. <laughs> Just that's how I got into sensory deprivation tanks. I saw Altered States. And they, they, they were historically fairly accurate in the design of the tanks. The initial one that you saw in Altered States showed what Lily had first came up with, which was like a glass scuba helmet that sort of suspended him in regular water. And uh, he would actually poop and pee into it. He had like some f crazy filtration system so he could stay in there and, and not have to defecate or urinate so it would go through some system that he had created. I mean, this dude was gone. <laughs> he was off the deep end. I mean, he's about as off the deep end as, as ever. But his his big thing was to try to figure out how you can get the mind free of the influence of the body. And the best method he came up to was this idea of the tank. And uh, he figured out eventually to put salt water in it. And that if you put enough Epsom salts, your body would float. And then he could maintain the, the heating temperature to essentially what's the same temperature as the surface of your skin. And you wouldn't be able to recognize where the water was. And it would give you the sensation of complete sensory deprivation. And he figured this out. And from that point on till like, God, I don't mean, <sighs> I met you in, what was it like? How many years ago was it? Uh, five or six, probably. Five or six years ago. And before that, I had that other gentleman who uh, used to repair tanks for <laughs> Samadhi, who's a great guy. Yeah. And he, he told me about you. And uh, the guy was fixing my Samadhi tank. My Samadhi tank had fucked up. Something, something. It wasn't the tank that fucked up. It was the heater. Like, it burnt through the uh, the lining of the waterbed. And it shorted out the whole thing. It was a disaster. Like, sometimes those heating elements, are just they'll pop. You know, for whatever reason, they, just, they cook, and it just melted a hole through the thing. So he had to repair it. He had to repair the lining. And while he was repairing the lining, he goes, you know, there's this guy in Venice that makes these, like, really high-tech tanks. And he goes, you should contact him. His name is Crash. He's kind of an interesting guy. And so uh, <laughs> I, I asked him about it, and uh, he went into depth about all the crazy shit that you had done to these tanks and what they looked like. And he sent me to your website, and I saw the tank. This is pre the stand-up tanks. They were still, like, s smaller, like um, ones like Samadhi, but way better constructed. You, you had figured out how to do it where it was just like this. It looks like a meat locker. I mean, it's so solid and well-built. And all your crazy filtration system and everything. And I realized that you were this one lone dude out there who was innovating in this sort of forgotten business. This sort of forgotten aspect of, uh, of, of modern-day understanding of the mind. I mean, it's really, it was ignored somehow or another. I don't know what happened. I don't know how all these scientists and geniuses missed out on the sensory deprivation tank promotion. They should have been talking about it everywhere. It is a mind-blowing evolution in, in meditation. It's a mind-blowing next step in meditation where you instantaneously go, if you get good enough at it and you do it long enough, you instantaneously can go to psychedelic states, intense introspective, objective, psychedelic states that are, they, 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 they change your life. They fundamentally change the way you think about life. And the fact that these people aren't promoting this, because it's not a drug. It's, it's totally safe. It's totally easy to acquire. It's, it's totally, uh, it, it ends anytime you want. You open the door to get out and it's over. 
There's no repercussions. There's no weirdness to it. You instantaneously drift back into normal consciousness. No one's talking about it. No one was doing it. And I, and I found you. And Brian created this uh, video. Brian was the guy who made that video where we uh, went down to the basement and videotaped the, uh, the tank. And uh, from, from that video on, we started hearing more and more people opening up these centers. They started going crazy. They started opening up all over the place. And you continue to innovate. And you haven't said a word yet, by the way. Have you noticed that? <laughs> well, no, I don't have to. I mean, you're, I, I, I'm just nodding my head. I mean, you're doing such a good job at, the, uh, at your appraisal of the situation that uh, – you know, I, I don't want to dilute it. With, no, I I just feel like I'm yapping really, too much. Not but, at all. No, but, I'm really enjoying this because you are the guy that six years ago, whatever it was, that first understood that too. Not only was I out there, uh, you know, kind of standing around by myself, but you know, the, the, when when I found you, then that really escalated the exposure in general, and, and that just isn't for me, or it, it, it has to do with industry overall. Once that, you know, you became, because you're, you're an honest guy and your opinion, people uh, trust it. And, and when you say something, then that uh, it, it has value. You know, there's, there's other been people say, oh, this, that, whatever. It, you know, it doesn't have that, that sincerity, the, uh, the true, uh, you know, from, from uh, what you believe type thing. It's a lot of times influenced by this or that. But once you, you know, and, and you've been, like I say, even with the device thing was a big thing with this. In the, oh, first, Hamilton Morris, it was great. He's incredible. Great. And without you, that wouldn't have happened. You know, it's just, uh, and that, these things help out everybody right now because the industry deserves a uh, opportunity to, uh, to expand and become uh, available to people in general. Because like, it is an important thing to a person that's in the process of, uh, considering what it is that they're doing with themselves, which, mm-hmm. which I think is very important for people to uh, take responsibility for their actions and what, 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 what they do and what they say. Because, you know, you, you can, uh, you're free to do that. You know, you're, you're allowed to be different. You're allowed to go ahead and say, you know what, I don't think this is quite the way that I, you know, and the, this is becoming actually more popular now. Is, is like freaky people mm-hmm. that are able to go out and say, oh, well, hey, maybe that. And they're going, oh, yeah, they're doing all kinds of weird stuff. These, I don't even know what, what a Pilates is, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's catching on. You know, right, right. I, you know, it's a, I don't know if it's just our neighborhood or what it is in L.A., but there's you know, these different yoga, spinning, all these yeah. different uh, activities that, 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 are, that people do. And, and a, a lot of the crossover, too, currently is based on these athletes. Mm-hmm. That that you have contact with, or that respect your perspective, or whatever, and they show up. That guy uh, Jeremy Stevens was mm-hmm. here the other day again. Yeah, and then I watched him uh, on a clip. The other day. I don't know when that this fight weekend. was. Weekend it was this past weekend. Is that when he got Great. that guy down? Amazing fight. He kicked him, and then no, no, he... no. That was a knockout that he had in the previous fight. <sighs> Man, yeah, that, that was... I just saw that the other day. He. He, uh, he, uh, he, did you guys That was in Brazil. Him? Yeah, incredible. And yeah, he Jeremy is such Stevens a nice a guy. He's a great guy. He's All those guys. Very smart, too. Oh, yeah. No. A lot of those guys are surprisingly nice and surprisingly smart. I think a lot of people have this, this idea about people that are involved in combat sports that they're mean or they're assholes. Quite the contrary. Uh, yeah. I find to be some of the most level, uh, well adjusted people we come in contact with. They're not trying to prove anything. Because they're already secure with who they are. Yeah, they're more level.